Hi, I am back. Uh, I had a little bit of camera problem. Batteries ran dead. Um, so, I'm not sure if you got the last part of what I was trying to say. Um, the delusion in an alcoholic family is that Dad just drinks a little too much. Dad likes to party. He's really a good guy. He only hits me once in a while. That's the delusional thinking when all the evidence points to the fact that Dad has an addiction. Dad has a problem. Dad needs help. That's the evidence. And Dad's addiction and problem and abuse of alcohol affects everybody in the family. Is the truth and the evidence to the contrary. Okay, I want to talk about toxic relationship patterns now. This is the pattern in my own life and in other people's lives that I've seen many, many times played out over and over again. If a person did not deal with their problems in the past, you'll often see them um, interacting in this way, using this very pattern with another person. Now here's the pattern. First of all, the person comes along as the hero or the rescuer. They want to help the person, the other person. Um, we'll use names, fake names here, of um, Mary and Jana. Okay. All right. This is not a reflection on anybody I know because I don't really know anybody personally with those names anymore. So, Mary decides that she's going to help Jana. Um, be a better, we'll say minister, because a lot of this happens, believe it or not, in spiritual circles. So Mary decides, and Mary's the one that has the major problems of the past that she hasn't dealt with. Mary decides that she's going to teach Jana to, um, I don't know, whatever type of ministry they're going to do. We'll say a singing ministry. Mary's going to be her mentor, her guru, whatever you want to call it, in the singing ministry. So she takes uh, Jana under her wing and she says, well, you know, I know all about singing. I can teach you all about um, different types of singing. I can teach you about different genres of musicals and music and things like that. So Mary takes Jana under her wing. Jana goes along with her. So Mary's kind of in a big sister, um, almost a mothering role, maybe you could say a mentoring role, a teaching role, whatever. Um, to the person that this is happening to, they feel very loved and nurtured and cared for and um, just really protected and safe and secure for a while. Um, a lot of times, Mary wants to show Jana off to her friends and say, Oh, look, look at my little friend here, you know, look at my um, student, my protege, um, things like that. You know, she's doing so well, she makes me so proud, etc. And of course, Jana's feeling great about that still. Okay, so they turn from what I call proud owner into what's called punishing parent, where Jana has to start living up to Mary's expectations. Now, again, we're talking about toxic relationships. I'm not saying it's not okay to have a teacher, a mentor, somebody that's guiding you. I've had many wonderful people in my life that have given me guidance. Um, and you just have to be careful and know what you're dealing with, um, which type you're dealing with. So along came Mary. She took Jana under her wing. She was the proud owner, and now she becomes the punishing parent role um, where you start to see Mary turn more into like somebody that might have been like one of her parents, her father, her mother, her one of her guardians um, and then Jana starts feeling uncomfortable like she has to try to measure up to what Mary wants and she starts feeling uncomfortable enough that she starts pulling away and um, when she does this, this sets off something in Mary, who never dealt with her own insecurities, and she becomes what I called desperate Delilah, which means she starts begging uh, Jana not to leave. Um, she will try everything from the begging to, after all I've done for you, this is how I get treated. You'll never find anybody as good as me. Um, you know, if only you would have listened to me, we could work this out. Um, now you don't trust me. You're saying I'm a terrible teacher. You're saying I'm bad. And it's because of Mary's insecurities, not necessarily because of anything that Jana is doing, other than Jana's trying what's called self-protection, which is actually a very healthy thing. 
So after that, if you continue to pull away, there may be this little thing that goes on where you come back, they take you back for a while, and then they start putting the screws to you as far as you have to do this, you have to do that, you didn't toe the line, and then you pull away again. The next thing that generally happens is they begin devaluing you. Um, I call this judge jerk. I know it sounds kind of goofy, but they become your judge and jury, basically saying you're demonic, you're rebellious, um, you're just like everybody said you were, you don't listen to authority, you don't obey, etc. Again, I want to stress, there is a healthy obedience to authority. I'm submitted to my pastor and his wife and the people in my church that are my leaders. Nothing wrong with that. We're talking about toxic relationships here. So, this new judge and jury decides to let you know how awful you are, how terrible you are at singing, why did they ever take you under their wing, why did they agree to teach you, you don't know anything, after all they've taught you, this is all you know, you know, you haven't learned hardly anything, whatever they can do to devalue you, and what a mistake that they made by taking you in in the first place. So then, if you continue to pull away, they go into kind of a funk where they get very deeply depressed. Um, they kind of play what I call the jilted lover role till you almost feel sorry for them and want to make things better for them. You find yourself kind of wanting to give up your own personal boundaries and do whatever it is that they want just to make them feel better. I'm going to talk more about this on the next part of the video, so stay tuned. And God bless you and talk to you in a bit. Bye-bye.